first thing I need to do is say that I will be putting this video on both my channels. Uh, I finally got through to my doctor and talked to her about the, the stroke and she said yes probably had one I probably have Bell, Bell's palsy I don't know if you recover from that or not um, I've got an appointment here in about a week yeah about a week I guess or week and a half to go in and see my doctor and, and uh, my ophthalmologist and all that and I will make the appointment um, prayers are working thank you for them I'm feeling better I got really ill I mean for a couple of days I didn't eat I uh, I basically um, like in 48 hours my grand total of consumption until today was uh, one apple, small one, extremely delicious, uh, four strawberries, two small cups of Greek yogurt, and uh, um, about a small handful of blueberries. And um, I was going at all three ends, my mouth, my posterior, and my nose. I mean, it was horrible. It's the sickest I've been in a long time. Um, but I'm over it. I, I don't feel 100% today, but I feel so much better today than I did yesterday that, than it's, uh, that it's if I could dance, I'd dance a jig if I weren't crippled. Um, you notice I have a broadsword hanging underneath a sign behind me. And that's because that long walking cane that uh, is right there. Um, the reason for that I shipped that pellet gun to my favorite brother-in-law, J.D. Reed. And uh, it's in a place of honor. I'll have to show you the fit photo he sent me. It, uh, I can't lift my right arm. There it is next to a trophy mount he's got. And uh, check out this picture of my new favorite deer rifle. Got it from a white, very wise man, one of my favorite people. He can't be referring to me because I'm not wise. And my reply to him is very accurate too. And then him, laugh out loud, I bet it is. I will cherish it always. Uh, the deal is, it's kind of a running gag between my brother-in-law and myself. Uh, it, uh, it is the worst pellet gun I've ever had, and I've had a bunch of them. If I pumped it up 10, 15 times, it'd throw pretty hard. And I sent him a new box of pellets, too. I wouldn't be able to hit any one of those guitars back there uh, with it from this distance, 20 feet. He might be able to hit something with it, I don't know. But uh, it uh, is a running gag. It started out, I gave him the world's worst uh, imitation bone handled lock blade knife that you can't put an edge on at all. I tried. And then he sent me a pistol that I've got down there. And it's okay. It shoots. It splits lead. But it shoots. 
So now I sent him a rifle. Now there is good news going on here at the farm. My son Brandon and I went down to Ardmore and he bought him a, a, a Chevrolet Impala. Very nice car. Runs well. Looks good. The whole nine yards. It's one of those deals to where you wait until the right moment and pray about it <coughs> and trust in God to help you solve your problems. We did and he did. Uh, my, uh, my take on everything going on right now out there is is uh, is that God's will is being done period one way or the other now my friend Jersey loves Steph suggested I put a hashtag uh, biblical or whatever on here to increase viewers Steph I hate to admit this to you but I don't know how to edit anything I don't know how to put hashtags on anything I barely know enough to get this thing out and get it loaded, and I'm not exaggerating when I say that. It, you know, I'm one of those guys that still uses a slide rule. You know, I mean, uh, I'm not saying I'm old, but I'm old enough probably to be your grandpa. I won't say how old I am, but I do not look my age. I've been around the globe for a long time. Let's put it this way, in a few days I've been married to my wife for 48 years, you know. <clears throat> anyway, um, and I just got to notice it's supposed to be raining tomorrow. Well, we just put new wiper blades on Brandon's new car, so that's okay. My son Chris is coming over to... Uh, Saturday to help me ad adjust the timing and uh, see what we need to do on the exhaust on my van so we can get it back to where I can use it. Uh, my son Benjamin just left. He's needing some daddy time and I understand that. Um, I've got a bucket load of stuff on my plate right now. People get tired of me saying I'm, I'm that busy, but I have more pestering me in real life than most people would ever believe. Um, I'll give you for instance, um, We've got three people living across the parking lot. We've got four people living in our side of the house and three people living in the other side. It's a big house. It was originally a duplex. So um, that's ten people living between the two domiciles. And it's a matter of trying to take care of everything. Now, I'm going to end today's vlog and, and uh, be kind with Scripture. If that offends folks, I'm sorry, but I actually feel compelled to do this. And I'll have to wear my reading glasses because I'm old, crippled, and almost blind. <laughs> <clears throat> this is Matthew the 28th chapter and uh, after I read this I'm going to read the whole chapter if you don't mind after I read this then I'm going to tell you something that most people don't know <clears throat> In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, the Sabbath is Saturday, 
First day of the week is Sunday, but we call Sunday the Lord's Day. Toward the first day of the week came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His count countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come, see the place where the Lord lay. And go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead, and behold, he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall ye see him. Lo, I have told you. And they departed quickly from the sepulcher with fear and great joy, and did run to bring his disciples' word. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, All hail. And they came and beheld him, and held him by the feet, and worshipped him. Then said Jesus unto them, Be not afraid, go tell my brethren that ye go into Galilee, and there shall they see me. Now when they were going, behold, some of the watch came into the city and showed unto the chief priests all the things that were done. And when they were assembled with the elders and taken counsel, they gave large money unto the soldiers. Now this is the Jews that gave the soldiers large money saying, Say ye his disciples came by night and stole him away while we slept. And if this came to the governor's ears, we will persuade him and secure you. So they took the money and did as they were taught. And this saying is commonly reported among the Jews until this day. Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them, and when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted, and Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. I felt that was particularly appropriate today because, <clears throat> you know, God still heals people if it is His intent. And evidently it was His intent to heal me as recent as the last few days. Um... I want to impart one more thing to those of you watching this. Pontius Pilate is who Christ was brought before, but not only just the biblical account, but an account that's archaeological, Pontius Pilate described Christ. He described Yeshua ben Miriam, Jesus Christ, Jesus the Christ, to contemporaries of his. He saw him giving a lecture. He was out walking with his entourage, um, his bodyguards. And his description of Christ was he was head and shoulders above everyone around him. He wasn't a short, swarthy, brown-skinned um, brown skinned Arab or Jew of that era and that area. He wasn't. Jesus was born of a virgin birth. The Creator Himself put Christ in Mary's womb. You can believe that or not, but I'm telling you right now, I absolutely believe it. And His earthly father, who was by adoption, Yusef, or Joseph, was a direct descendant of David the king, as was his mother Mary. 
So he was from the house of David on both sides. What is the thing that set the house of David apart from others? That lineage had something very unusual about them. They were light-complected. And Pontius Pilate described Christ, described this Jesus as being tall, muscular, with golden hair. Golden hair, what does that tell you? He was a blonde. He was not a brunette. He was not swarthy. And he talked about the blueness of his eyes. He had blue eyes. Now, if you take the time to really go and look up archaeological records and really look at things, the Nordic race, the and I'm half, uh, half Viking, actually, on my mother's side. If you look at that, what you will find is that, by and large, most of them are fair-complected, blonde-haired, and blue-eyed and green-eyed. Same with the Irish. You know, most of them have, the old ones, have red hair. But the reason for that is they hail back to David. It doesn't really make them better than anybody else, and that's not what I'm saying. Uh, my dad was brown-skinned. Uh, a lot darker complected than, than I am. And my siblings, you know, same stock as far as uh, my dad's second wife and those children. I love them as much as I love anybody on the planet. There is no such thing to me as half siblings. They're my brothers and sisters. Um, I'm quite a bit older than all of them, including my younger brother that's living in our house behind me. The thing I'm pointing out is that Christ always makes things happen for you. He not only laid down his life and took upon him the sins of all mankind so that we wouldn't have to pay for it ourselves, he also keeps a watchful eye out for us. He's our shepherd and we're his sheep. That's all I'm going to leave with you today. I'm not trying to be preachy. And once again, Jersey loves Steph. I don't know how to do a, a hashtag. I'll have to study on it some. Know that this crazy crippled old man loves you with everything I've got to love you with. And know that... You need to pray for everything and anything and for others and be thankful for your blessings and be an example to others for good. I never was like that when I was younger. Now that I'm an old man, I'm really trying. Love all of you. God bless you and bye.